Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I will talk about the differences between positional and continuous rotation servo motors. These are two types of motors that can look very similar but serve different purposes. In my experience, students can have some confusion when switching between the two, particularly when controlling them with an Arduino. So in this video, I will demonstrate controlling both types with the Arduino servo library. Let's start with the positional servo. It has three connections for signal, power, and ground. In this case, that's the orange, red, and brown wires, respectively, which I have connected directly to the Arduino. Now, the positional servo can only rotate about 180 degrees. It cannot go through a complete rotation. The command signal you send it from the Arduino controls the servo's angle. The Arduino servo library uses a write command to send an angle between 0 and 180 degrees to the servo. I have an example program loaded from the Arduino website that is simply going to linearly sweep back and forth between 0 and 180 degrees. So, when I power my Arduino up, we should see my servo automatically oscillate between those two positions. Now, as you can see, this physical servo does not have an actual range of 180 degrees. It looks like maybe it's more like 160 or 170. So, not all servos might have a true range of the full 180 degrees, you will need to check your servo's data sheet to find out the actual range. You can also double check the color coding for the wires on the data sheet as that may vary between different manufacturers. If you want your servo to stay in a constant position, you just send it a single number. For example, sending 90 will make it stay centered in the middle of its range. So here I have switched back to the oscillate code, but now I am going to switch over to the continuous rotation servo, which again looks almost exactly the same, but has this extra 360 on the label. So this has the same color wires and the same connections, signal, power, and ground. I'm simply going to unplug my positional servo and swap in my continuous rotation servo. We now see very different behavior. Instead of oscillating back and forth between two fixed positions over a limited range, this servo goes through multiple complete rotations as it changes direction and speed. The control signal from the Arduino, instead of controlling the angle in this case, is now controlling the servo's speed. But where the confusion arises is that it is still using a number between 0 and 180 from that same servo library. So, the confusion occurs when students want the motor to stop, and they set that variable to zero, which I've done here, and as you can see, that is causing the motor to spin full speed. You have to remember that the variable has a range of zero to 180. In this case, sending it zero is going to make the motor spin full speed clockwise. Sending it 180 is going to make the motor spin full speed counterclockwise. So, here I have set the value to 90, and you can see the motor has stopped. But this can still cause some confusion because students will ask, well, I sent it 90, why didn't it rotate to 90 degrees? You have to remember that that variable is controlling the speed of the motor and not its angular position. So when you send it a 90 and tell it to stop, it will stop wherever it is in the rotation cycle. You cannot mix and match and get both types of functionality out of a single motor. If you want to control the position, you need to use a positional servo, in which case if you send it a 90, it will rotate to 90 degrees. Another common control method you will see with Arduino and servo motors is the use of a potentiometer. In this circuit, I have the potentiometer connected to one of the Arduino's analog input pins. In the code, I am measuring that voltage using the analog read command, and then using the map function to convert the analog value, which has a range of 0 to 1023, to the servo value, which has a range of 0 to 180. This is pretty intuitive, as the angular position of the potentiometer now corresponds to the angular position of the positional servo motor. If I want the servo to be centered at 90 degrees, then I need to turn the potentiometer to the center of its range. If I swap in the continuous rotation servo motor, we see that it is stopped when the potentiometer is in the center of its range. Again, the code is calculating a value of about 90 to send to the servo. If I rotate the potentiometer counterclockwise, then the motor will spin counterclockwise. The farther I rotate it, the faster the motor will spin. If I rotate the potentiometer clockwise, then the motor will spin in the other direction. Here is a little bit of bonus information because if you've made it this far in the video, you might be wondering, well, what is that control signal actually doing? 
and I have an oscilloscope hooked up here to measure the voltage on that signal pin that is controlling the servo motor. And you can see that what it is doing is using something called a pulse width modulation signal, or a square wave with a variable width of the pulse. In other words, you change or modulate the width of that pulse which controls the servo motor. So you can see as I turn the potentiometer here, the width of that pulse on the screen changes. And if I zoom out on my X or time axis here, we will see that the signal is actually a chain or a series of these pulses. And again, when I change the potentiometer position, I am changing the width of those pulses. I'm not changing the period of the signal. So the time from the beginning of one pulse to the beginning of the next pulse stays the same, but I am changing the duty cycle or the percentage of time that each pulse is high. That duty cycle or pulse width is interpreted by the servo motor and in this case converted to an angular position. For the continuous rotation servo motor, it is converted to the angular speed. So the Arduino servo library does the hard work for you and lets you just send an angle to your servo motor with a single command instead of writing the code to generate this PWM signal yourself. You just have to be careful and remember that if you are using a continuous rotation servo motor, it will interpret that number as a speed instead of an angular position. Hopefully this video has helped you understand the difference between positional and continuous rotation servo motors, how you can control them with an Arduino, and which kind you might need for your project. For many more electronics and Arduino projects, as well as thousands of other hands-on science and engineering projects, check out our YouTube channel and visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.